Hey everyone, let's talk about my coil gun. Now, before I show you what I built, let's go over the concept of coil guns in general. It's really quite simple. Imagine a projectile, which is just a steel rod and an electromagnet, basically a coil. When the coil turns on, it will attract the projectile. This will not cause the projectile to be shot away, rather it will stay exactly in the center of a coil as it's being attracted to it. The important thing is to turn the coil off exactly when the projectile was accelerated to its full potential, which would be the center of a coil. In my case I am using a phototransistor to detect the projectile in the right spot. This setup could already work as a coil gun, but you'll need a high voltage and a lot of current to get the projectile to a reasonable speed. There are many designs using single coil together with massive capacitors that get charged up to a high voltage. However, these capacitors are not just expensive, but also bulky and take some time to charge. Not to mention that you would have to work with high voltage, which is always a lot of fun. Instead, I am using several coils in series, each accelerating the projectile more and more. The coils are powered directly from battery, which allows me to shoot one projectile after another and I don't have to worry about getting shocked. This is the final result for now, but I will be making a nice 3D printed case and adding some more coils in the next video, so subscribe for that. And let me just show you now how I build this and at the end of the video I will show you some testing as well. I actually built two prototypes. I started with single coil just to prove the concept and then I tried two stages to see if I can make it work. They are both pretty much the same, the second one just has two coils. The brain of this project, apart from me of course, is an Arduino Nano. That allows a lot of flexibility during prototyping. It really just turns the coil on and off and has some safety features programmed into it. Then there is the battery, two packs of three cells, 1400 mAh, uh, these batteries are connected in series, so that's together a nominal voltage of 22.2 volts. Plenty enough, and I can always add more. But I probably shouldn't. Now let's talk about something interesting. The coils. These are hand wound, and to make sure that I can replicate the same coil and to make the winding easier, uh, I designed this tube thingy and it's 3D printed, and not only is there room for the coil, but there is also some space for the infrared sensor. However, I had to use a bit of a support material to print this. You know, just a bit, not much, it's not like it took freaking 15 minutes to, to take off and then all the bits and pieces were flying, and then I was finding them in the corner of the shop. No, that did not happen. It has these little ridges for the wire to sit in, there is also a hole, where you can push the wire in, there is a hook, you will twist it around this hook and it will keep it in place and you can really pull on the wire and the wire will sit exactly in those ridges and so the first layer really is flawless, it looks perfect. Of course with the following layers it's not going to be that easy and they are gonna turn out a bit worse and at the end it's, it might just end up being a mess, but it still works so who cares about what it looks like. And by the way, if anybody is interested, the wire is 0.8mm and the 3D model you can find in the description if you want to download that as well. As I mentioned, there is also an infrared sensor at the end to detect the projectile coming out. On one side there is housing for 5mm infrared LED and on the other there is housing for 3mm infrared phototransistor. Now, photodiode would actually be more suitable since it has better response time, but I only had phototransistors, so that will do. This is the schematic. Uh, depending on where you get your phototransistors from, you might need to adjust the resistor. I'm using 680 kilo ohm, since this one gives me voltages, you know, from about 2.8 volts when there is nothing in the tube and around 0.1 volts when uh, the projectile is blocking the light. This makes it really easy for me to detect the projectile coming out, but for you it might be different. With this resistor you might be getting, you know, values from like 4.8 to 4.7, which isn't a lot, and in that case you would want to decrease the resistance 
and vice versa if you would have really low values you want to increase the resistance so you just have to play a little bit with this and uh, for the LED I am going with 330 ohm resistor which is fine for 5 volts but if you are not sure you can always use one of those calculators for that. Now let's move on to controlling the coils. Each coil pulls around 40 amps from the battery so obviously we are not going to be controlling that directly from an Arduino pin. Those can only handle like up to 20 milliamps. This is an uh, IRF3205. It's widely available and affordable MOSFET. Uh, best of all, it can actually handle up to 55 volts and 110 amps, considering you can cool it, of course. So if I want to add bigger batteries in the future, I don't even have to change the electronics because this can easily handle that. So that's really neat. So this is how you would connect a regular MOSFET to an Arduino. Nothing fancy, a source goes directly to ground, drain is connected to your coil, which is on the other end connected to the battery, gate goes to Arduino, make sure both Arduino and battery grounds are connected together, add pull down resistor here and flyback diode here and you're good to go, right? Not really. The problem is that if you look at the datasheet of the MOSFET, the gate to source voltage is 20 volts. This means in order for the MOSFET to fully trigger, 20 volts needs to be supplied on the gate. Now we can't really do that with Arduino, so I came up with this complicated solution. And please just comment below how much easier this could be achieved, because I'm sure there are easier ways. Anyway, this is how I did it. Uh, we get around 22 volts from the batteries, so my first idea was to use that voltage but since I might upgrade the batteries in the future, uh, that would kind of ruin it. So instead, I grab one of these step up converters, connected it to 5 volts, which I have on the Arduino, and set the output to 20 volts. These 20 volts will then power LM358, which is an op amp, uh, but I'm using it as a comparator. Uh, note, the voltage on the step-up converter is actually set slightly higher than 20 volts in order for the output of the comparator to be 20 volts. Anyway, the comparator is very simple concept. You have two inputs and one output. If the inverting input, which is the minus, is lower than the non-inverting input, which is the plus, then the output goes high. And of course the other way around. Basically, we put two and a half volts on the minus and an Arduino pin to the plus and that's pretty much it. Since the LM358 is powered by those 20 volts, the output will be 20 volts as well. So you just turn the pin on the Arduino high and the output goes high. Connect the output of the comparator to the gate of your MOSFET and you're golden. For those wondering how I achieved the two and a half volts, I just simply connect it to resistors in series and the pin in between them is connected to the inverting pin on the comparator. I just refer to this picture. I've also used the pull-down resistor for on the Arduino pin, which is completely redundant, but things always go wrong for me and this just makes me feel a little bit better. So I have made this custom perf board for the MOSFETs since they are handling such a high current. And uh, first I added heat sinks to the MOSFETs just to cool them down. This was ultimately a mistake, but I'll go over that later. First thing to be soldered on the board was this XT60 connector for the battery. Then I added the MOSFETs on the other end and just to kind of outline uh, where everything will fit. Next I soldered the gate resistors. These are just 22 ohms, they are necessary but recommended. I followed with pull-down resistors Next, I grounded the source with 22 gauge solid color wire 
This is in my opinion the bottleneck in the design so I will have to put at least one more pair to handle the current. Then I connected the flyback diodes. I have actually made a mistake here, they were supposed to be connected to the positive terminal, but I forgot to bridge the gap. And later on my first try I fried the MOSFETs and had to replace them just because of this. Before connecting the coils I mounted the perf board to its place so I knew how long the leads needed to be. The ends were sanded, well actually I used X-Acto knife because it worked better for me, and then uh, soldered in place. I've also attached these extension wires just so I can connect it to the Arduino. It was time for the first test. I tried with my bench left power supply but it wouldn't budge, even with 3 amps the projectile wouldn't even move. So I decided to dry my batteries because those can supply a lot more current. And if something doesn't work, it obviously just needs more current. And at first glance it worked, but it totally didn't. You can see here that the PCB blew up, and you can also see here how I'm hysterically unplugging the battery. Few things went wrong here. This track on the PCB wasn't thinned, so it just literally blew away because it couldn't handle the current, but that was an easy fix. However, the flyback diode wasn't connected and that's something I've mentioned before and this caused the MOSFETs to blow up as well, so I replaced those, I connected the flyback diodes properly and that fixed pretty much everything. After fixing all this, the coil gun performed very poorly. Yes, even after all this, it still did not work. Even my first prototype with just a single coil worked a lot better. I mean, the projectile would leave the barrel just occasionally. And I was getting quite frustrated with this thing. I didn't know what was actually causing that. But in the end, I actually found out that the problem was the heatsink. Because actually the MOSFETs, um, the backside of them, is connected to the drain and since they are connected with the same heatsink their drains were connected together so I was always turning on both coils at once I couldn't switch them separately so I just removed the heatsink and since I didn't have two separate heatsinks I'm just rolling without any heatsink at all and it works it actually works flawlessly I was a bit disappointed that I'm not able to go even in through cardboard box, so I decided to make a pointy projectile. I actually ended up making four different ones. The first one is just a rod without any f modifications, and uh, by the way, this is just a 7mm steel rod that I salvaged from an old printer. Next one was this poor attempt with my Dremel trying to make a sharp edge. Yeah, it wasn't the greatest one, but with the third one I had a better idea to make this round end. I mounted the rod in a drill and then I was spinning it while sending the end. Now this wasn't very effective and I actually ended up taking my power drill and creating this poor man's lathe. And yes, that is a zip tie. And it actually works surprisingly well. This round end was already a lot better, however it was still struggling with just the cardboard. So I wanted even pointier projectile, so I created this last one with a cone shape. And since I don't have many tools, I use a Dremel and a drill. I wish this was a sanding disc, but it, it is actually a cutting disc since that's the only thing I had. And just by pushing the rod against the cutting wheel, I was able to create this awesome shape. And this one is actually performing the best. It has absolutely no problem with the cardboard, so I decided to put the entire coil gun together. This is, as I mentioned, just a prototype and I will be building 5 or 6 stage coil gun with a nice 3D printed exterior and everything in the next video. So that's why you see me just taping everything on a scrap piece of wood. It doesn't look great, but it has some style. Let's just test it out.
quite underwhelming result, but once I will finish this project, I'll have absolutely no problem destroying any of these things. So don't forget to subscribe if you want to get notified about my next video and I'll see you next time.